Hello and welcome to another episode of Msingi Africa Television. I am your host, Choma Phillips. Last week, our friends at Tunacheki dropped a video, which on the surface, while it was disturbing, it didn't look as disturbing as it actually turned out to be when we started to dig into the things that they shared. And what they did was they shared a list of five unethical medical experiments that were conducted on Africans in like I think like well from way back from the 70s or so and on the list of the five are forced contraceptive use um, in Zimbabwe during colonialism so while it was still being called Rhodesia um, birth control experimentation in Navrongo in Ghana and uh, menigi meningitis testing in Kano in Nigeria by Pfizer and um, Majengo experiments in Kenya, which were HIV experiments that were conducted on um, some commercial sex workers who were found to be immune to the HIV AIDS. And finally, HIV AIDS testing in Malawi, Ivory Coast, Uganda, Ethiopia, Tanzania, South Africa, Burkina Faso and Zimbabwe, um, where testing on women of women was con where testing on pregnant women was carried out and the infants were allowed to actually contract the virus. So we looked at the video <laughs> and we started to dig a little deeper. And the deeper we dug, the more troubling things became. So this is what we found out. Now about the issue of uh, forced use of contraceptives in Zimbabwe, um, there's an article by not an article, a chapter in a book called Black Women and International Law, which you can find on cambridge.org. The chapter is chapter number 11 and it is titled Black Women and the Development of International Reproductive Health Norms, written by Judith A.M. Scully. Now, in this, art, in this chapter, Judith Scully goes on to say that between the years of 1994 and 2000, USAID provided 41,967,200 units of Depo Provera to the developing world at a cost of over $40 million. Now, if you remember the video that we did on the depopulation agenda against Africa, you'll understand why this is really troubling because this is just straight up evidence about it. And this is specifically Depo Provera, which is uh, birth control injection which has some terrible side effects which i urge you to look up if you or anyone who you know is considering birth control or is actually using deeper provera at the moment now she goes on to say that USAID sends, sends, present tense, more units of Depo Provera into African countries, including Mozambique, Tanzania, and Nigeria, than any other part of the world. Black women in Zimbabwe, so not only, Zim, not only Zimbabwe, but Zimbabwe and South Africa were either deceived or coerced or both into using Deepa Provera. So they would be told things like, if, if you want to continue working here on this place, then you're going to have to um, get the Deepa Provera shot. If you want your children to get healthcare at this clinic, you're going to have to get the Deepa Provera shot. So you're either manipulated into doing it or you're cheated into doing it like it's good for you in some way, shape or form. And, um, what it turns out is that this is, like the Tunacheki video says, an actual attempt at population control of what were the fertile Africans at that point in time. Eventually, I think in 1981, Zimbabwe went and um, banned the use of Deepa Provera. I don't think every country in the world has banned the use of Deepa Provera, despite it having a very sort of shady approval process, because by the time it got approval from the FDA, it had gone through very many rejections. And by the time it got the final approval, it had eliminated tests that were being carried out on dogs from its results in order to get that final approval. Shadiness extraordinaire. The second one, which is also linked to uh, Deepo Provera, is the tests that were being done in Navrongo, in Ghana. So, 
Experiments were conducted on 9,000 unsuspecting, impoverished women in the Navrongo region of Ghana, where it is said, according to the Re Rebecca Project, the Rebecca Justice Project, that Pfizer and its constructive participants and principal intermediaries should be charged with fraud for making false claims engaging in false marketing, fraudulent promotion, concealing harm, minimizing harm of Dipropovera, and promoting it to children and adolescents despite FDA black box warnings. So what this means is that they were aware that Dipo was actually harmful to people, but they snuck into Navrongo where um, it was said that, uh, what are these things called? Family planning services were probably not in wide use and it wasn't clear how they were going to be able to penetrate and ensure that family planning would get deeper usage and deeper acceptance by the local communities. I don't know how they always find access into our quiet little villages, remote areas, not the capital. It is inside where they will go to do their research studies. Anyway, they went there no informed consent forms were administered. The women were told they were being provided with routine health care and the data was being collected and analyzed for unknown purposes. Deeper Provera, again, is... <sighs> you need to look for those side effects. I'm not kidding here. This is one of those where you have to do the research yourself because you have to understand what poisons are being injected into people. And you have to understand that they have actually had a bias, they've been found to have a bias to market Deepro Provera, not only to Africans, but to African-American women in the US. They're being encouraged to take it up despite its negative effects on the body, not only in the area of fertility, but other systemic issues that could rise up. So that was number two. Then, meningitis testing in Nigeria, in Kano. So in the late 90s, there was an outbreak of meningitis in Kano in Nigeria. Apparently the worst that had been seen in that region in a long time. And Pfizer saw the opportunity to go and test one of its drugs called trovafloxacin. Um, so they ran a test on children using this drug and in comparison to another drug which was the standard for use in treatment of meningitis at the time known as ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone was supposed to be used at the rate of about 50 milligrams per kilogram in terms of dosage but they reduced the official dosage to 33 and many were suggesting that this is because they wanted to ensure that the results favored their own drug so they tested on 100 children in nigeria and 11 died six died from the ceftriaxone and five died from trovafloxacin use now after all of this, what happened was that there were lawsuits that were levied against Pfizer and Pfizer was busy denying and saying, no, it wasn't our drug. It was actually the disease that caused these deaths. Oh, no, it wasn't us. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. And then um, later on, a WikiLeaks cable came out suggesting that Pfizer had actually hired people to try and find dirt on the governor of Kano so that he could then now overturn the cases. Of course, Pfizer has denied these allegations, but you know, one has to wonder. It also came out that apparently, according to a Guardian article, that what Pfizer wanted to do was to test this drug in Africa on our children and then afterwards roll it out to American and European uh, markets. What happened in the end was that they weren't able to get access to the European market. Their license was revoked there for the use of this drug because of suspected liver toxicity. But they were not sorry, even though they were forced to pay out this money in settlement, about $75 million. So each family got a certain amount, though there was also talk about certain politics in the distribution of these funds. <sighs> they still claimed their innocence. That's the meningitis one. And then there were the Majengo experiments in Kenya um, on prostitutes who displayed immunity to HIV. So 
how this happened was some researchers in Canada were doing research in Canada on um, I've forgotten what they're called some sexually transmitted symptoms uh, in their women but by the time they figured out how to grow that bacteria in their own labs and everything the whole outbreak in their population had already been dealt with or subdued or brought under control and so now they were out of test subjects and they didn't know what else to do so in conversation with a scientist or a researcher from Kenya a Kenyan uh, the guy said, you want to do what? You want to find which saws and which boils? We have them. Come. And so they came to Kenya and they started to do their research. And in the course of doing that research, they discovered that um, there were prostitutes in Kenya who appeared to be displaying signs of immunity to HIV and AIDS. And that was exciting to them. Now, in the process of all this, the government of Kenya was very upset because they were now saying that these scientists were going to come and then destroy the whole sex trade in the country and chase away tourists. Okay, maybe not destroy the sex trade, but chase away tourists because of saying that Kenyans have HIV and AIDS. And um, well, what they would be doing there in those places, I don't know, but that's another matter for another day. But. Um, the Canadians managed to push through and eventually get access to Majengo slums and they set up shop there. And they carried, carried out these studies on these women, observed them, actually found that there are some women who were resistant to HIV and AIDS and they were so fascinated and they really wanted to try and find a way to isolate these cells or whatever was giving them the immunity so that they could be able to create some kind of you know, miracle drug or a vaccine that they could then be able to sell to the rest of the world. And, you know, this was the aspiration in return for the tests, giving out blood and, you know, talking about the experiences and whatever other things they were subjected to. These women got access to better health care than they would anywhere else. And it was free. So to my mind, I was thinking, yeah, OK, so this was sort of quid pro quo. It wasn't really exploitation. But it turns out that there were aspects of exploitation that were taking place during this study. Um, because these women, even though they actually contributed to, um, they created what, uh, several vaccine candidates for HIV and AIDS. They created volumes of research for these researchers who are now not limited to Canada and Kenya, but I think South Africa got involved. And um, let me just check my notes here. Mm -hmm. Kenya, South Africa. Europe, the UK, and I guess some other countries, and Canada were involved in, um, in this whole research project to try and figure out what exactly was preventing these women from catching the bug. And what happened was that at the end of the day, it just seemed like it was more convenient for the researchers to keep these women in dire poverty and in a cycle of infection and transmission. Because for research data, scientific research data, it's much more interesting than alleviating the conditions, the circumstances that these women are actually facing to bring them out of behavior that was putting them in the path of danger. It made more sense to the researchers that they just stayed there and observed them in their natural habitat. Isn't that fun? Yes. So exploitation galore which makes one think because even the ladies who were involved in the study started to think that i mean we're basically being ignored and sidelined and pushed aside and yet we've contributed so much to the success of this project and people were aware how much these women had given to science but no recognition nothing no real help for a very long time eventually they got some kind of token assistance i think from the canadian government and well it remains to be seen. Number five, HIV AIDS testing in Malawi, Ivory Coast, Uganda, Ethiopia, Tanzania, South Africa, Burkina Faso, and Zimbabwe, and wherever else they've gone, because this wasn't actually a research project that was limited to Africa, but it was an Africa-Asia project, where the US had discovered a drug that could prevent transmission from mother to infant during pregnancy and during childbirth. And so they did their tests and eventually they got stopped midway because they were having such great success proving that the drug was going to work to prevent uh, transmission. And so they said to themselves, they have to find a way to help those Africans who are struggling under a burden of HIV and AIDS. So what are we going to do? 
the drug that they had was costing something like $800. So they said, there's no way these lower middle income countries are ever going to be able to afford this treatment. So what are we going to do? How do we run a trial in those regions and try and find a solution? They agreed amongst themselves to try and use a cheaper drug in order to prevent um, transmissions between mother and baby. But here's the thing, they decided against all their rules, regulations, policies, and protocols, that it would be best for the most part to use placebos, which is the fake one that doesn't do anything, versus using the actual drug to prevent transmissions. Why? Because they wanted to record incidences of transmissions between mother and child, meaning that 1,000 babies, more than 1,000 babies in Africa, in the Caribbean, in Asia, more than 1,000 children were infected with HIV AIDS, while the people who actually had the drug that could have stopped this from happening stood by and in the name of science wrote down their findings. 15 out of 16 of the trials used placebos. One trial used a real drug that could actually help the babies be protected during this process and they stood by. And this raised a huge ethical storm in the scientific community and people were writing here and there and protesting and complaining about how could they do this and how could they do that and it's not fair and this was unethical. And I don't really know that anything was done legally concerning it, but um, like I said, Tunacheki dropped a video, but that video was not a small thing. It was quite a bomb. And it left us thinking, um, do you know that modern medicine is founded on such cruelty? When you read about the Tuskegee uh, syphilis experiments that were conducted in the US on African American men to observe what would happen when syphilis was left to run unchecked in somebody's body. And they ran these tests for 30 years, 30 years, 30 years letting these people go through the symptoms of syphilis unchecked and untreated in the name of science and yet we know that this was also also racially motivated when you think about that and you think modern science was founded on such norms when you think about um vaccines which have aborted fetal cells in there. I mean, aborted baby. They take the tissue and then they put that in your vaccine. Do you sit and think about these things and say to yourself, well, if it wasn't for these people who went through these things, our medical system wouldn't be so strong and so robust. And so you sort of brush it off and say to yourself, it's fine. This is acceptable to me. That such cruelty would be done to people and to animals in the name of science and protecting the larger majority of people. Because you understand that this is the logic that goes on behind the scenes with um, vaccines overall vaccine testing. They know that a certain percentage of the population is actually going to get harmed or worse, they will die, but they take that as a calculated risk in order to save the greater majority. Is that okay with you? Did you know in the case of Nigeria and Kano and the meningitis outbreak and the testing that the approval letter was actually signed after the fact, meaning that Pfizer didn't even have authorization to actually go onto the ground and carry out this testing. And as far as I can find, they did not have any informed consent forms that were signed. This is the same Pfizer that has rushed a COVID vaccine and they're now applying for emergency use application. They're making an emergency use application with the Federal Drug Administration of the United States of America for a vaccine for covid for you vaccine which usually takes more than five ten years to prepare and to test and make sure that there are no long-term side effects pfizer the same ones please understand who came to nigeria and snuck into kano and did whatever they did so that they could make money in europe and in the us have now prepared a vaccine for you to use Think about that for a moment. Even as you think about how, as Africans, when they were talking about, when those two French doctors opened their mouths and said that, in fact, we should just test this vaccine in Africa, and eh, 
everyone in Africa was up in arms and saying, no, 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 you do your tests in your own countries. We're not interested. We won't touch your tests. We won't touch them. Now, um, tests are being done in South Africa. Tests are being done here in Kenya. And I'm sure there are other countries that are preparing to start doing tests of the COVID vaccine that they rejected so vigorously on social media and so loudly and so proudly. Tests are being done of the COVID vaccine in Africa. Live, here, ready for you to, take, to try. This system has not changed. Let me tell you something. The same people who would do sterilization experiments on the Herero women in Namibia, present day Namibia, back in the day in, uh, please, I've forgotten which year it is, but if you go online, you can find it. The same ones who are insisting on vaccinating people with polio vaccine, which is actually the strain being found to cause polio-like symptoms in children in present day Africa and India. The same people who are doing malaria vaccine trials in Kenya, the same ones who are doing HPV, HPV, the one for cervical cancer trials on our daughters in Africa. The results of which we will not know for 30 years, 30 years, when it is too late, 30. Look at your young daughter, add 30 to her years. And at that age is when she'll be wondering what's going on with my body, 30 years. For an STD, the child is not even having sex. <sighs> Those same people are the ones now pushing for a COVID-19 vaccine. The same way they tested on the Jews in Nazi Germany and then used their findings to advance modern medicine. The same cruelty and the same lack of compassion is the same way they're pushing forward what they're calling modern medicine with all its strange ingredients to push into your bodies and to my body. But we're still sitting here and we're still taking it. You know, <laughs> sometimes we, we, sit, we sit and we're thinking about this continent and we're thinking about what must change in order for things, you know, what must change inside us in order for things to change on the outside. And I just wonder, like when you watch a video like this and you think about the horrors, because I really want you to actually go and do the research yourself and think about it closely. For centuries, for generations, these people have been testing on people in Africa, in Asia, in the Caribbean. They don't, they don't mind as long as they get the results that they're looking for so that they can go and make some money. They're doing it. They don't care what you think. They don't plan to stop and they are not sorry. They're not. Does that make you realize that whether we know it, like it, understand it, believe it or not, Africa is actually at war. What Benson Rutendo said the other day in his video, that there is mental warfare against Africa is accurate. It's not just economic sanctions. And we have sanctions against us, whether you understand it or not, because there is no level playing field in world trade. There isn't, not as far as Africa is concerned. Sorry, there is medical warfare in that we, number one, do not get the best treatments that they have available to us because they say we're too broke to be able to buy them. So they give us some managed, reduced version of the same to kind of keep us going. In the area of agriculture, where our crops are being, our crops are being poisoned with pesticides and herbicides and who knows what they're doing in those hybrids and then the GMOs that they're trying to bring into the country and those weird seeds that they insist on us taking. Our soils are also being poisoned likewise, as is our water. Our entire food supply is being compromised. In politics, where they infiltrate our governments, in our societies at the grassroots level to tell us what sort of strange ideas we should accept about how our countries should be run so that every single country should look the same. How is it possible? You can't. We're all different. Our beauty is in our diversity and that needs to come to bear. The different wisdom that is available in each one needs to be shown forth. Our medical system, I've already spoken about. In fashion, in arts, everything, in music, the influence is on Africa to conform to what is in their mind. Have you stopped to think about why? We are under attack constantly, whether we understand it or not. And you don't have to like it, you don't have to like this message, but it is true. 
and it's very true and as long as you sit there and you take it let me tell you something when this vaccine they're planning on releasing comes out you're going to stretch out your arm and say right here brother or sister put it here i'm ready without understanding that 10 years from now you'll be looking at your body and wondering what did this rna do to my system because i don't seem to be the same it's time to stop and think. What are your politicians doing about it? In Kenya, let me tell you what they are doing. Yesterday, was it today, they announced that now the, the members of parliament want helicopters to be available to them, to be able to rush them to hospital. The government announced that the national health provider, the national health insurance fund, is not going to pay for anybody's COVID treatment, except for government workers. That's what's happening here. I don't know what your own case is in your own country, but we have a problem because clearly our solutions are not coming from the government. They basically said, you go and die in your house. Take care of your own selves. Us guys, we have the money we collected from you in tax. We're fine. Worst case scenario, we'll, find, we'll apply for a waiver and fly to another country and get specialized treatment or fly a doctor in. Isn't that how it goes? You know, I'm not talking a strange talk. Wherever you may be, north, east, west or south, I'm not targeting any specific country, I am targeting the continent of Africa. It is time to ask questions of yourself. What are you doing? You're sitting there and you're taking a pill. Do you know what it cost for that pill to be created? Who died? Who was sacrificed in the process of science? Is that okay with you? When here, over here around us, we have green things, trees, we have grass, we have herbs, we have not bothered experimenting or going to those traditional healers who understand how they work to find out how they work, growing them. Our medical care is not far and it doesn't have to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You just need dedication, commitment and time to plant some things around you that can boost your immunity, heal your body from assortment of things. If you care enough, you will just wake up and find yourself a trustworthy traditional healer who you can seek counsel from. If you want to spend money on anything, don't spend money on shoes and clothes and cars and alcohol. Spend money on spending time with a healer. You can invest in him Maybe he'll be able to reach more people or her, whoever she is, she may be able to reach more people because of the money you give them. Meanwhile, you will get invaluable information that you will be able to pass on to your children and to your neighbors so that when the next thing they decide to unleash on the world is unleashed, you will be prepared. How does that sound? You see, for us, it's a tragedy. We've recently lost doctors in this fight against COVID and it is sad and it breaks our hearts but we also don't understand why that is the case. We don't. You'll tell me oh you see because COVID does this. No it doesn't make sense to us. We have the solutions, we have the understanding, we have the wisdom and we have the tools at our disposal and we are simply turning our backs on what we know to be right, accurate and true. And we have a responsibility to stop that right now. We can't be those people who just sit around and complain. Because let me tell you, the list of five in this video by Tunacheki is horrifying. It's very horrifying. But you know who is to blame. And you won't like this. It's us. Because we allow this cycle to keep going on and on and on we sit and we say this is so so bad how could this happen to us oh we shouldn't have done this we need to work together then we sit then the next thing comes and we say oh this is horrible this is so bad we need to work together we need to push we need to overcome these things then we sit then another one comes do you see what i'm saying over and over and over crisis after crisis after crisis and what's happening the system is getting deeper and deeper entrenched because no significant pushback has come out from us. So we need to stop it and we need to start to act. Otherwise, the next thing that comes, whatever they shall call it this time, that thing, Africa won't make it. 
But thank you for taking time to stop by and to watch this video and to listen. We've shared the things that we believe need to be dealt with now in order to save Africa. But it's possible that you have different ideas or the same but greater amplified. Maybe you have it in writing, maybe you have videos, maybe you've already done a video. Just share this information with us. We will help you to share it with whoever it needs to be shared with who we can reach. If not us, then we know people who have platforms bigger than ours who might be interested in your content. But by all means, do all you can to save your brethren while there is still time. This isn't the time to slack off because that vaccine, it's not been released yet, but they fully intend to release it. And you can see they have many different versions and that's not even the cheap one yet. So before it comes out, can we do everything that we can to turn around this African narrative so that we can walk away from the things that we know are harmful to us? Because the people who sign letters for these studies to be authorized and done, carried out in our countries, they are our own brothers and sisters, but they work in government. Do you understand what I'm saying? The threat may come from closer to you than you think, but we have the tools for our own escape and salvation at our fingertips. So let's use them. Let's work together. Let's band together. So remember, like, share, subscribe, comment. We really like hearing from you, sincerely. It helps us, it builds us, and it challenges us when you bring in thoughts that we hadn't yet considered. And we're happy to incorporate them in our videos and in our articles going forward where we know that they fit.